we have a MacBook Pro. Uh, it's a 15 inches, and uh, it says dead. This is uh, quite an old device. Uh, A1286. So it's no power, and it's uh, quite urgent. This is uh, one of the really old 15 inches. <clears throat> As you guys know, uh, when it comes to no power, we, we tend to always not connect power to it until we are sure of what state the device is in. Okay, the board looks clean. It is an A20 2330. That's the board number 2008. Uh, this is mm. some reason that's I had scratch on the drive, we're not sure why that is, and it actually is actually, you know, they're trying, I don't know what they're trying to do there. Okay, let's connect the charger to it, see uh, what's happening to the machine. It doesn't look like um, liquid damage, so it's safe to connect charger to it. Let's connect charger and see what we get. We have charger communication. Um, this is an old device. So you're not expecting to see the fan to spin, so you have to actually. Uh, so connecting the, the 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 charger will not automatically start the device. You have to actually power the device on. So let's try to hit the power button. We don't get any reaction. Okay, so. Um, Mm. Let's open up the board view. <sighs> this is an A20 2330. A20 Okay, this is our board. Um, so I, I try hitting on the power button, it's not responding. So sometimes, on, especially on these older devices, uh, when the keyboard will fail in the manner that the power button will not work. So what you will do is you can use um, the pads, the, 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 the on and off switch pads on the board, which in this case is gonna be here, these two these pads here. If you check on our board, it's, it should say SMC on and off. So that SMC on and off, that is this part here. So what you want to do is you want to short that part to see if we have power. And we do not have power. Okay, let's just confirm we have voltage at, our, at, at that part of on and off. So we have voltage, we're supposed to get 3.2, 3.4, okay, that's fine. We have power there, but we do not have, uh, uh, shorting that pass to not start the machine. Okay, let's see what do we have on our PP boss. We're expecting to have 8 point something, 12.6, uh, okay, yeah, 12.6 volt. PP bus is fine, and that also tells us that at the, uh, at the level of the SMC, PP bus, it's uh, been... Um, PP bus, it's uh, SMC is working at the level of the PP bus. Okay, so the the older devices, they had a common failure on the GPU line where one of uh, one of the tantalum cap over time uh, over time tends to fail, and when that happens, uh, the device will not start. 
So let us see if that is the case here. And I believe um, that cap is C7771. Uh, I'm just, uh, just going to, okay, let's see. I can check. Let's flip it on the other side. Yeah, C7771. That's the cap. So usually over time, that cap tends to fail. And one of the ways you can uh, you can confirm is actually that cap. It's when you take the board out, you just need to hit uh, the cap a little bit and uh, see if it if it reacts to it. Uh, if it well, after hitting up the cap, the device will start. So usually, what you do is you replace the tantalum cap. You can replace the tantalum cap with another uh, with another tantalum cap, but um, that will just um, that will solve the problem temporarily not temporarily so to say that will solve the problem but in the near future uh, you may around about the same time that this this failed you may also have the same failure from uh, uh, it's the same pattern of failure uh, resulting from c7771 so let's take the board out and uh, get to see if that is the issue that we are dealing with uh, that's just a common thing with the older devices so we are yet to confirm if that is what we are dealing with here. The battery connector is going to be stuck to it, so we have to. Connect the battery from the other side. Okay, now we can put the shell on the side. So this is um, our C771, this cap here. So what you want to do is you want to slightly heat up the cap. Let's see if uh, that will solve the issue. Okay, let's try now. Let's show the pads again. Okay, so um, the problem was definitely C771. So what we're going to do now is uh, we are not just going to um, heating it up. It's only going to give a temporary uh, solution. We'll have to uh, replace it. Again, I do know about to get the cap. First, we'll see if we can find a non tantalum cap. That will be the best option. If not, we'll have to reuse the tantalum.
Okay, so uh, the cap that we're going to use, uh, it's non tantalum. Uh, this is a bit, this is this is this would do a better work in terms of this. Uh, but then if you look at it, you see that um, this is way bigger than this one. However, if you look at the, the pads underneath it, uh, we are only going to use so a switch uh, multimeter to continuity mode. If you look, we have one, two, three parts. So two parts are going to be one, and then one part is on the side. So, so it's, you have one, two, three, but actually it's it, there are two parts. So let's see, one part is supposed to be the same. So this is the main, then this and this is the same. So our replacement would then be it is it will be as though we are doing this like this. So this pad will, will, will correspond with this and this will correspond with that. Do you understand? So does this and this same. And then this. So which means this and this is what we worry about. Now on our board, uh, and also these caps they have they so they have markings which are which are what give basically how you you tell from a polarized cap and a non polarized cap we check the marking the marking on the side uh here that is going to uh, that will indicate the main which is also going to be pin one uh there that's where that's main and then the other side is going to be ground and then when we flip it so we have identified that this is ground this is also ground while this is main so and um, that cap we we got from a MacBook Air board. Uh, so it, that's a better version. Uh, that's that's a better alternative to what we had there. Okay, so we are going to do this, and then another problem is uh, oftentimes uh, because the, the space. Another problem is usually it's the space. So this doesn't usually fit. So you have to kind of struggle to to install it. Mm, let's see. So I, what I, what we would rather do is because uh, just just close to it uh it's q771 that mosfet will not allow us to this is gonna be, we and we, we cannot move the mosfet and if we let's see what do we have brown okay another thing we can do is we can we can make connection between this and that so instead of having to run it like this we can flip it like that let's see is that that is an option but because of the inductor here that's not going to be an option let's see what do we uh, okay and if we decide to do this Okay, so we will have a. Uh, mm, that's not going to work because even if we try to adjust that, that the MOSFET, now nah, we won't have enough room to. Uh, okay. Let's uh, use the next best alternative. So this can go back.
Okay, this is going to be our next best alternative. Okay, that's installed. Okay, let's see. Just gonna have a working board. Okay, we still have uh, a working board, so wait for it to try. Okay, that's it. Uh, that's, uh, that's a working device. Uh, it's pretty much what it is that we need to do. Uh, we had to replace C771. So over time, that cap uh, tends to fail. Uh, and the solution to it is to um, replace the cap. If you have a better room, if you have enough room, you can always find a way to um, uh, squeeze in a, a different type of cap in there. But if you if you don't, you don't. Um, yeah, so pretty much that's uh, what it is. And thank you guys. I will see you guys on the next one.